So here we are at AZH Wound Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This patient presented to us with uh, a post-surgical diabetic foot ulcer. He had a necrotic ischemic second digit. He was taken to the operating room. This was debrided, uh, leaving the soft tissue deficit. The patient was managed uh, for a few days of negative pressure wound therapy, but because of the nature of the wound, you can see the close proximity of the wound to the digits, uh, securing a seal was exceptionally difficult. Uh, so he's been managed with uh, some standard wound care. Uh, you'll see the wound is uh, granulating fairly well right now. We do have some fibrinous uh, and some non-viable tissue across the wound base. We're gonna debride this today. My concern at this point is that this area in here is still a little deep and uh, we have some uh, small amount of tendon exposure. So we're gonna debride, clean it up, and we're gonna transition to a dressing uh, that is very unique and novel. It's a polymer nanoparticle dressing called UltraZeal. We're going to demonstrate the application of this dressing today. So first we're going to do some debridement. We like to use ultrasound debridement in our clinic and we'll demonstrate that to you today. So we've now debrided our wound. You can see there's a very robust granulation. Again there is some depth here. Uh, this is a little uh, subcutaneous tissue that's not well granulated, but there is no necrotic tissue in the, in the wound. We're now going to uh, apply uh, the UltraZeal polymer uh, dressing, and um, this is, again, a nanoparticle dressing. provides uh, particles that cover the wound. Uh, once uh, the material contacts the wound, it turns into a polymer, uh, which is very adherent to the base of the wound. It allows moisture to transfer through the dressing because of its high moisture vapor transfer rate, remains very well adherent to the wound, maintain a good moisture barrier at the uh, interface, um, and it can be worn for uh, days at a time. In fact, we've had patients on a single dressing application for weeks at a time. The blister pack is opened, and the UltraZeal is then applied to the wound. What I like to do is uh, sprinkle the UltraZeal on the wound. And uh, this is the technique that, uh, that you use. You'll see when the UltraZeal does contact the wound, uh, it interfaces with the moisture that's on the surface of the wound and turns into the polymer that we're looking to create. When you're applying UltraZeal, it's important to realize that more is not better. We want just a thin layer of UltraZeal across the wound base. We really don't want this uh, caked up and have a lot of excess UltraZeal. Sometimes you need to manipulate the patient, roll the wound as you just observed. UltraZeal, once it polymerizes, forms a very good barrier to the external world. So this is impermeable to bacteria from the external world, provides a very nice uh, preventative barrier to any type of bacterial uh, colonization or attempt to attack the wound. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of that excess powder and I'm going to move it into areas of the wound where I didn't quite get full contact. And you'll see what I'm doing is I'm manipulating the surface polymer, surface UltraZeal. This is still a powder so it's not been fully activated. And the reason it's not fully activated is it requires moisture to activate. So if it doesn't interface with the surface moisture, we need to apply some moisture to form the, the UltraZeal. We do this by taking a gauze uh, and uh, dripping uh, some moisture into the wound. See so what happens is when I take a drop of moisture and apply it to the UltraZeal, it quickly polymerizes. We don't want to go too aggressively or too fast because we can actually cause a splash formation and uh, that ultrasound would then be disrupted. Again, we're having a barrier form on, on the wound that allows moisture to penetrate through due to its high moisture vapor transfer rate, but yet the barrier that's being formed is resistant to bacterial penetration and attack from the external environment. I've almost completed the polymerization process here. I'm fairly happy with that. And once again, we have uh, near complete covering. 
Um, sometimes I will add a little extra ultra zeal. You'll see that I've added moisture now. That uh, will then, when I add additional ultra zeal, the polymer will be formed almost immediately. So I need some extra coverage in those areas that I see a little bit too much granulation peeking through. And once again, more is not better here. We just want to cover it across the wound base. Fairly simple application process. So as you'll see, we've got nice coverage of the entire wound base. Sometimes wounds can be just left open to air. Again, this does form a barrier, and uh, many times we don't need a secondary dressing. However, in areas that uh, sustain high trauma or friction, uh, such as uh, external surfaces of the, the foot like you see here, because we're going to be putting compression and socks and, and footwear on uh, over a joint, uh, somewhere where there's high exudate, uh, this patient does have some edema, so it may exudate. We may want a secondary dressing just to absorb some of that exudate or protect uh, the dre the ultra zeal uh, from external friction and forces. Uh, in that case, just a simple gauze dressing can be applied. You can also add foams or other dressings, uh, depending on the characteristics and nature of uh, the wound uh, and what you're trying to accomplish. But again, this is not providing a primary dressing. We've already applied the primary dressing. What we would be doing is enhancing the primary dressing by applying a secondary dressing to protect, maybe to absorb, and to cover the wound. So I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to a new technology, the polymer dressing called UltraZeal. I think you might find uh, the results interesting and uh, a technology you may want to incorporate into your clinical practice.